Oh, hey. <laughs> His flashlight still follows the mouse when you're in the pause menu. Till it suddenly doesn't. It just it just stopped. That was weird. Well, it was for a bit. <laughs> Alright, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> it's all been leading up to this moment. Don't fuck it up. No big deal, we just gave them like one full day of warning by... Oop, I didn't mean to run. By awkwardly coming in here and then leaving. Ah. What is that? A concrete pipe buried in sand and dust. A polar anorak. There's more communism outfits to combine together, I guess. Um... Okay. I guess we found a ruby and they were ready for us or something. Something is going down. Suddenly your entire body is paralyzed. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. Through the static you hear a woman's voice. It's like a thousand radio stations are being blasted into your head all at once. But her words are the only ones you can make out. I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Whoa. Whoa. It's like having more than one hit points mandatory. I guess you could heal it, though. But there goes the health right there. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance. But here we are. As she says the word, officer, you feel a spike in agony. It sounds like entire radio frequency range is screaming directly into your neural pathways. <clears throat> cover your ears or don't cover them? Aren't people already covering their ears? Don't cover them? Oh, that's a mistake. <coughs> that's a mistake. That's an awful decision. Why would you not want to shield yourself from it? It's an entirely new type of experience. Way worse than all the previous ones. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. Yell to the static. You are under arrest. Really now? Check this out. She turns the dial in her hand. She's actually going to kill me. You're overwhelmed by a new surge of violent static. It feels like a blood vessel exploded in your brain. What is happening to me? I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. The explosion of static you're hearing. It's the Uland frequency. Blasted from that pale emitter Fat Angus mentioned. I saw your equations, the ULAN frequency. Saw my equations? You've been sniffing through my lorry, right? Well, I expected as much. Well, I am a bit surprised you knew what you were looking at. Zzz. One, three, six, eight, four, one. Three, seven, eight, nine, thirteen, oh, three. The pale latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pale. Literally crunch the distance across it. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pale, people lose their minds in just a few years. So, what we are experiencing is a concentration of radio waves. He gestures towards something with great effort. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. 
It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you might be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. She likes telling you about the machine. Keep her talking. Look for an opportunity to break loose. Have you experienced the compressor yourself? Yeah, I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. How did you get your hands on this thing? I built it myself. She nods towards her torture device. And she's proud of it, too. As she outright, as she ought to, this is way beyond your abilities. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? Oh yeah, way beyond. She studies her death ray and the law officials trapped in it. Will I stay like this forever? No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like walking out of a very confusing dream. Three, four, two, four, five, five, seven, nine, seven. Terra Kralis, Palun Araole, Omote Nul Pilvilevs, Omonte Nli Pulivez Mu, four, four, six, four, five, four, four, eight, two, nine. This is all great, but let's talk about the man who was killed. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. This is way more talking than I would expect out of this scenario in general, honestly. Please, could you turn it down so I can ask you something? If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. Two, three, six, one, eight, nine, two, eight, one. If you're looking for a deal on mattresses, sh 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 speed free. Two, three, five, six, seven, three, two, nine. Seven one zero oh, four seven three zero oh, two eight one nine. Oh Rosaline, oh Rosaline, it's the Speed Freak channel that that Kim listens to. Damn this! The lieutenant clutches his head, grimacing. God damn it! She regards you and Kim with sudden sympathy. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. She steps reluctantly out of the shadows, the pain lessens. The gun she's carrying is a two-barreled front loader, not like the murder weapon. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. There's only three meters between you and the machine. If you keep her distracted for long enough, maybe... Be careful when you make your move. That'll be it for questions. Bide your time. <clears throat> Destroy the machine with my pain threshold? Oh no. That's not the stat I'm hoping for. Uh, I can put one point into it, but then that's it for pain threshold forever. Great. <clears throat> How did you know we were coming? I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. By hiding bullets under floorboards. So you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. She didn't rat you out, by the way. Isabel, the washerwoman. So nice. She smiles a little smile. That's one knife I didn't want to find in my back. As opposed to the other knife she's finding there now. Hardy, for one. Why hide the bullet, though? This could have turned out pretty bad for me if you hadn't walked right into 25 bands of ultra-high frequencies. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. Did you shoot Lily? No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching, though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. 
Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No. She hesitates. He wouldn't have broken first. You're right. Clashe was the first. To share your, her suspicions. <coughs> oh. She smiles sadly. I knew the kitten had claws, but not like this. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? Your first guess wasn't entirely off. Dight is in his boys, ma'am. They told us you were on the coast. Even now, Kim is a paragon of professionalism. He's trying to make a clean cut of telling her she was betrayed. She pauses, taking it in. Well, fuck. And those guys liked me. I know it. If this is what happens to people whom, whom people like... A dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck do the rest of you get by? Does she mean that you're not a person whom other people like? Wait, wasn't it you who called me the human can opener? It's not personal, I opened that up. I did, didn't I? And now you've come back for me. She scoffs. But fuck them all the same. I do it by asking questions. And I have some for you. Like what? She adjusts her grip on her gun. I already told you I didn't do it. A strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. Would you say Laylee was a likable person? I didn't like him. Hearted mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. You don't... Did you feel protective of the Union? Yeah, sure. And I didn't like Wild Pine sending in those foreign hirelings. Me and a fucked amount of other people around here. I hate to bear the, be the bearer of bad tidings, but I don't think she's perjuring herself. You don't feel sympathy for Mercs? It's hard work. Plenty of broken people who don't come. Uh, plenty of broken people who don't come with that kind of body count. Besides, they're paid well for what they do. Do you have an alibi for when Lily was shot? Man, I was, w I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon you. They did say you left to take a really long leak. Fifteen minutes. Yeah, and I'm sure they also made some funny remarks about it. They always do. I've driven a lot a lot of long haul and chugged a lot of beer, ma'am. Man. She scoffs. Can't do either without some power of mind over bladder. And anyway, that wouldn't have been enough time. Our investigation has shown that 15 minutes was just enough time to commit the murder. Wow, now I'm curious. Please explain. Play pinball much? No, not since I was 14 and hanging out at the only diner in Dardan. Haven't been into low risk, no reward games since moving to the city. Why?
Never mind the pinball, then. There's a secret way from the whirling bar to the roof. Don't know it, but also... She frowns, studying your face. Evaluating your, evaluating your competence as a police officer. The shot couldn't have come from the roof, or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a point there. No one mentioned. The pain stops her from finishing the sentence. Stops him. You have a gun. And? Where'd you get it? The gun store. What gun store? Trigger Happy Jacks. That doesn't sound like the name of a real store. What did you think, that I'm going to squeal on my gun supplier? Sorry, I'm not that kind of gal. I see it's a front loader. Do you have another gun somewhere? Sure don't. A breech loader? No. This is such a wipeout. I can't quite tell. What kind of gun is it? A knocked away 80 front loader. Two barreled. Not really what you're looking for, I'm guessing. That isn't it. Do you collect guns? Maybe old rifles? No, they're not practical. Break too often. Do you like to hang out on the rooftops? Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Clauchet's rooftop. Sure. I've hung out there. She's got this great antenna. Is that the only reason you hung out on the roof? This is the strangest place to have such a long conversation while this is happening. The view's pretty bomb too, but you might say the antenna was the main attraction there. Yeah, along with Clashe. What's so great about her antenna? It's very powerful. I used it to tune into RCM frequencies. That's how I knew to be prepared for your arrival. 8510239333, come in. So you're sure you didn't shoot the Merc from the roof? Yes, I'm sure. And anyway, as I said before, the shot had to come from afar. Did you leave any flowers for Clashe on the roof? No. Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. These weren't just flowers, they were symbols of revolution. So now I'm leaving revolutionary symbols around, come on. But Clashe was mourning. I never did understand why. When someone dies, a hot house is worth the flowers has to die too. Okay, so you didn't leave the Maybells. No, I did not. You're running drugs for the Union. I've been through your lorry. She shakes her head slowly. So hard of gold, Tommy fucked me over too. Never trust a musician. Maybe twist the knife? Just in case. Make her more desperate. <clears throat> Yeah, I made him talk. Yeah? That figures. She shrugs. What now? You're going to arrest me for drug trafficking? He's more upset than she lets on. You're a criminal. I can't trust anything you say. She scoffs. That's your prerogative. You had... a financial incentive to kill the Merc. Man, it's to get away from all that murderous shit that I left Jamrock, my previous employer, for the Union. <laughs> the lieutenant's unable to articulate his question. She deliberately avoided naming the mob she worked for. You might be able to find this out later. She turns the knob down just a millimeter, then continues. I got lucky being a dispatcher. 
Never had to do any of the really dirty work myself. This gun? She glances at it. Has only been used for self-defense against serious scum. There. It's going to be easier to reach the machine now. But you're threatening us with it. Based on what I've learned about you, you are serious scum. She responds, holding your gaze. Okay, let's take a step back. Yeah? Where? Ooh. Nudged it during the drugs talk. Who killed the Merc if it wasn't you? How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head when I got to him. And there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. Those rings around her eyes. Her tired voice. She's been staying up late listening in on conversations crisscrossing Martinez. Police radio? You've been following the case? Who hasn't? She shrugs. You know, I can still see him there, in Cloche's room, lying on his side. He was still warm, but the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he'd been dead for a long while. What happened Sunday night? Tell me your version. She eyes you warily, as though gauging your sincerity. It's okay. We just want to... He struggles to finish the sentence. Alright, don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few beers, like always. Then Clashe comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves. So I grab a seat next to her. Wait. Did she also seem high to you? Oh yeah, super. But I didn't think too much of that at first. I'd seen her party hard before. Clashe. Said you knew something was wrong immediately. No, I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. It wouldn't be a first for her, but... No such luck. She was in some deep shit. She asked me to come upstairs. The merc she'd been going with was lying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so, yeah. You made it look like he'd been hanged. It's pretty weird that you came up with this plan right on the spot. What? No, faking a lynching was her idea. Her idea? Yeah, in cold blood. It really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. Uh oh. Did she actually plan this? Seems like somebody else would have had to do the shot, but what if she did plan it? You can see it. Her lips, though still white, don't seem to tremble as much anymore. She moves with focus and deliberation. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity. Then she dressed him while I went to the, get the Hardy Boys. Lashe knew exactly what she was doing. You can't remain calm under pressure otherwise. She lied to you about that too. That's bad that she'd be so calm. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. Do you think she killed Lely herself? As I keep telling you, cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. But even if this is true, the lieutenant forces himself to finish the sentence. Once you were, this lynching might lead to... War? She purses her lips. The thought crossed my mind. But the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way. Although the way things are going... She doesn't want to talk about this. But not because she has something to hide. She doesn't want the guilt. She shrugs. 
Eh. Fuck it. I'm not responsible for these people after what they did to me. If you didn't kill him, why hide? I saw you roll into town. I wasn't about to stick around for questioning by a goddamn La Puta Madre agent. So this is what she was scared to tell Titus. This cop. This cop. What do you mean, La Puta Madre agent? She looks at you quizzically. Yes, you. Everyone says you're his peon. His human can opener. Uh oh. I'm about to die. <laughs> I'm taking so much damage. Through the sudden sharp pain in your head, you hear the lieutenant mumble something to himself. <clears throat> Fucking hell. And why me? You hear through the wide noise. It's especially bad, suddenly. Felt like a vein exploded. Who is everyone? How do you know this? Everyone in Jamrock. The crops, the criminals. Why do you think I've holed up here with a goddamn death ray waiting for you? If she knows that about you, she must know your real name, too. I'm still asking about my name this far in. Tell me, what's my name? If you know that about me, you must know my name. Harry Dubois, she replies quickly. One corrupt motherfucker with the disco pants and the funny tie. Agent of La Puta Madre. So she knows your name. That doesn't mean you're on the take. Criminals make up boogeyman stories about cops all the time. La Puta Madre. I've heard of La Puta Madre. He's dangerous, right? Is that a joke or a threat? I'm guessing both. No, that was a real question. Yeah, sure. She doesn't believe you. I'm sure Laputa Madre made him himself will explain it all to you soon enough. A man in a white suit walks through a garden, coaxed from soil that had once been through covered in asphalt. A city block closed off from the rest of the city by dark buildings. Rows and rows, rows of poppies, most of which have lost their pink bloom, flank his steps. The man looks around, then up at the sky, sighs. Taking out a knife, he crouches at the end of one flower bed. He scores a sea pod very gently. Milky sap begins to ooze out. The pain comes over you again. What did you do to this madre anyway? You've been into my lorry. You think the biggest player in Jamrock appreciates competition? She pauses. And now I have Harry Can Opener in my lair, fucking Titus. Wait, one thing. Possibly small, but she said you she said you rolled into town. Was it you singular or plural? She might know something. When I came into town, was there anyone with me? Yeah. You had your death squad with you. What happened to them, anyway? Who was in this squad? Well, it wasn't the scrawny dude. She nods towards the lieutenant. You had two guys and a lady. The guys look pretty buff. Lady wasn't bad, either. Two guys and a lady. Death squad. Are these people related to... the two people that were in... The whirling in rags before? Or are they or do they have something to do with the three mercenaries? But I showed up after the mercenary that died, and the other mercenaries were with them, weren't they? 
shit. We have new characters. Huh. And I might be a and it's starting to sound like I'm affiliated with a gang, so that's not a great sign for me. But if you're one of those people that was bu bummed out that my current actions, my past actions might be too synced up. Because maybe your backstory is backfilled to be informed by your current actions and so on. Uh, there's definitely some stuff that doesn't line up, because my behavior does not line up with me being a corrupt cop so far. So, that, uh, so if anything, my rebirth version of me is improved on that front, I guess. What else can you tell me? One of the guys seemed chipper, a blonde. The other had a brooding something or other about him. And the woman, the one was the only one in uniform, all were carrying. She narrows her eyes. That sound about right? No idea who these people are, literally. Satellite officer, Vicar Mare, looks out the window grimly, then puts his coffee down and turns to patrol officer Minot. We can take either we can either take a room here in the whirling or go home for today. Let's go home, Jean. There's nothing nothing's going to happen today, she responds quick quietly. Jean takes his blonde wig off. Call Helm Heidelstam. He can give us a ride. The blonde wig. Oh shit, that was them. I think I know them. They're in Martinez. Zzz. Friction lock set. Zzz. Don't leave me here, please, please. Fantastic. I've got to get on the road. Then you can go find your friends. Unless you have anything pressing to ask me. I've got a call to make here. Do I want to attack the compressor? If she's not the murderer, I don't know if it's even useful to arrest her or not. And there's kind of this background detail of like, everyone's afraid of me. Not because I'm just a regular cop, but because I particularly have this background of being corrupt and coming in with the supposed murder squad, as she puts it. There's an ongoing hint that the act of arresting people might actually be really detrimental for them in a way that's not normal for arrests. We're learning more bad news about Harry. Oh wait, do you know about the bunker next door? What bunker? The communist hideout back there. Don't know anything about it. No one's been around since I set camp up. But I'm sure I'm not the first vagabond to... Her voice trails off into the white noise in your head. It feels like an aneurysm approaching. Jesus. Lerambun, Starburst and Sunshine, 24 degrees centigrade. Keep calm. Breathe in. After the pain recedes, it's a little clearer. Momentary window of clarity. Oh, Jesus. I gotta make up my mind. At this point, I have a decent chance of succeeding. 83% is pretty great. And I could put one more point to threshold to really see the deal. I have the point, but it does mean that I can't put a point to the pain threshold for the rest of the game. So I have a decent chance, but do I want to do it? I'm not sure. Because if I destroy the machine, things might go bad. She has a gun. She has the advantage here. We're sp she said that we're both going to be really discombobulated for minutes after those machines stops. So she could just kill us. Or other things could happen. In general, hostility seems like a mistake. It seems like the real reason that she fled is because we are more threatening than, than even I thought we were. Because we have affiliations that are distressing that we've conveniently forgotten about because of our... Nightmare drunken rampage that happened earlier. Meanwhile, she has a pretty compelling point that she can't have killed him. Both because she was downstairs 
Well, no, she wasn't downstairs when the murder happened, because she was in other places, apparently. But... Everyone does keep saying that nobody heard a shot. Which would mean that it has to be far enough away... ...that people wouldn't hear the shot itself. Which means it basically has to be coming from the island. Which a lot of that points to that idea, like, including my, like, general, like, interpretation of level design, like, kind of points to the idea that, like, the island would be, like, this big climactic final location, because it's this place that's been locked from me until now, but it's still clearly there on the map, and it, it, we're foreshadowing that we're gonna go there. So it makes a lot of sense in a game structure sense that the shot would come from the island, but also I've checked the other two potential locations that we thought about. And we, th until now, we thought that it, that it was most likely to came from the, uh... ...from the roof, but we never found any gun residue on the roof. But it would have probably been gone over the course of the week it's been. Because enough time has passed that the evidence would be gone, potentially, from all the rain that keeps happening all the time. But the other more compelling argument is the fact that, that a gun probably would have made a sound. I don't really have much reason to think that silencers are much of a thing in this universe, especially given the murder weapon that it was used as this old-timey gun that almost certainly doesn't have any kind of silencer mechanism or addition you can use. So it really points to the idea that somebody, that the person who fired the shot was somebody else. Meanwhile, the idea that Klaus is manipulating me jives with pretty much everything else we've ever known about her, so... Generally speaking, it seems that Ruby is just a drug dealer. And that's just fucking small fry shit right now. <laughs> it's just not the priority for me right now. She's an ex-gang member that joins the union and deals drugs. Okay. We're going- we're finding a murderer right now. Just doesn't seem like the thing to get in a gunfight over right now. And she's kind of given me all the information she might have. Possibly. But ultimately, she, yeah, she's not, she's not the gunman. Because if the, if the, sh if the shot had to make a noise, which it seems to make sense to Kim too, then sh if sh anyone who was in the building at the time would not have been the one who fired the shot. There's a decent chance that the person who fired the shot isn't even a character I've met yet, considering how far away it, it came from and it's on an isolated location I can't access so far. Maybe Joyce can give us a ride to the island? Maybe I can talk to her about that. I'm kind of wondering if the, murder, if the murderer was one of his crew members, one of his squad members, because those kinds of people might be the ones that can pull off a shot like that. They have military training. I think I'm gonna let her go. I think there's just too much at risk if I try to be aggressive here. And she might have a similar reaction to the idea of being arrested that uh, Clauche has, where it's like a death sentence. Which might not go well with her gun. Because we've established before that she seemed to have one bullet stored away like a suicide measure. She verified that earlier too, she mentioned it too. She might even shoot herself if I actually break free. I can't take it anymore, just go. Don't attempt to destroy the compressor. Glad to have been ass of assistance. She tosses her head back defiantly and turns down the machine. Best of luck to you officers. Ravishol's a bitch. The one runs past you and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. I, I guess that's the boundary of the, of the range. All things considered, the lieutenant still reeling from the pain. That could have gone worse. Wait, shouldn't we go after her? No, I don't think she did it. She's someone else's case now. It's too late now anyway, she's gone. What now? Now we have to come up with a really good excuse for why we walked right into a trap like that. This isn't going to look good in the report. He looks around, then points further into the cavern. Her tent. Maybe there's something in there. 
Uh, all that warm up to getting my gun and it didn't come into play at all anyway. That's good though. If I'm lucky, I'll never fire it. I kind of am not sure about that though. Dark water trails into the distance. There's no way out. But the water, I guess. Ah. Ah. A little bit of insurance to get back the health I lost. Cooking utensils. She's prepared herself porridge with bananas. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I don't like those at all. I don't like porridge or bananas. Call me crazy. Pile of money. The plain red tent stands by, dispassionately. It was pitched by practiced hands. She's used to camping out. Look inside. The tent looks old but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. Shine your flashlight on the books. Assorted soft covers. Mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. Lieutenant peeks in over your shoulder. See anything? Sift through the magazines. Rega Monthly. Journal of Material Science. More Technological Digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's, it's not a magazine, it's a leather notebook. A notebook. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. We should read this immediately, like, right now. Probably. Ah, Friday's cleared out. My god. The impossible. Been a hell of a week for us, hasn't it? You found Ruby's journal. Read it. That was a Thursday goal, I guess. Looking for Ruby. We did get a few more clothing items. Polar Anorak. Layers and layers of polyvinyl and artificial che sheepskin make this coat ideal for, tra for, tra for traversing snow plains and on dog sledge, uh, sledges. Somehow you knew it would be waiting for you underground, in a sunken pipe. And you found it. It's as if the city gifted it to you, to keep you safe. Oh, I think that did come up earlier. They mentioned that before. Weird. Look at me go. I'm all, I'm all cleaned up for the weather now. That suddenly makes more sense for a bit. <laughs> Look at me all dressed up for the occasion all of a sudden, huh? And armored. A well-loved journal with a brown leather cover and the brand name Schneller embossed in the back. It seems to have served as a loyal friend to a lonely traveler, Ruby's Journal. A thick journal. The cover is worn, like someone used to carry it around in her back pocket. Examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name, Schneller. Schneller is a stationary brand from Gottwald, belo uh, beloved among architects and engineers. She's got good taste, and must have taken whatever she recorded here seriously. Unwind the strap. The journal falls open. About two-thirds of its of its ruled pages have been filled. Study the handwriting. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs that have been crossed out, with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. Flip through the pages. 
It's a mix of logistic notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left us in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. What kinds of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in these notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. What are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor. Sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. She seems to be pretty clever in general. Anything personal? Short, wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appear to be attempts at some sort of difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. A way of... The way some of these question marks trail off into ellipses. She was going through a tough time. Staff issues. Always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. How far back do the entries go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. What did she write the day Lily died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though. Well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except... But that's another matter entirely. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. Anything about La Puta Madre? That name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. Small wonder. Would you talk about La Puta Madre in your journal? You do see an M, though. La Puta Madre. M is mentioned on the M March 9th and March 15th. Read the entry from March 9th first. Great. M. Pion is... Oh, it's me. <laughs> is coming to town... No doubt to investigate the lynching. But also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head. While I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? The call? Did M call her personally? Why? Read the entry on March 12th. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but... I don't know when I'll be able to leave. Or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people. The boys, for example, but... Experience tells me. Did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know it if he threatened people. They take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. What's the most recent entry? The most re recent entry is from today. It reads, Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run? Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. The lieutenant taps on the page. It looks like she might have been framed. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good we didn't catch her. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. He frowns. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than with us. Especially if she has problems with the Madre. 
Kim, am I really a La Puta Madre agent? He looks you straight in the eye for a moment, then sighs. No. I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. He truly does not believe you are. Perhaps he shouldn't be so trusting. His trust is well placed. You aren't. You can feel it. Then who do you think killed the Merc? Would have been Titus. Then again, he pauses to think. But no one heard the shot. Maybe there's a hardy boy we've yet to meet who acted as his accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on him. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling and rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. Yes, we do. Huh. It's endless, isn't it? <laughs> the journey. Return to the whirling after the whole instigator debacle. Someone there has to has something to answer to. Ruby said you were a notoriously corrupt cop, La Puta Madre's peon. That's why she was scared of you. When you get the chance, call your station and find out more, if you dare. Hmm. Hmm hmm hmm. Hey, I'm more points superstar than boring now. I think that makes me objectively not boring, right? <laughs> hmm. Am I cooking anything? I'm not, am I? Do I want to cook anything ever again? I don't know. One more door. That's not really a big deal, is it? It's nice that it unlocked all my side checks, but that I don't have to keep it around for that purpose. Meanwhile, having minus one light, half light is actually bad. But the, the issue, of course, is that many of these might have a number of random bonuses just as a result of being interpret... Uh, Incorporate into your brain So like there's scenarios where this can come up. I've had I've had bonuses to certain checks already from this. I think But you never know how much those will it's gonna come up Cleaning out the rooms. When did I get that? Someone's been walking around in your dreams lately. Looking for something. Tidying up. Rearranging. Storing away all the unrealized dreams. Putting old pains in boxes. The worst nightmares have settled down for a while. A spot of light on the bedroom door after the dark. The fluttering of eyelids in the spring sun. A thought that arises only to disappear again. And yet there's a pattern emerging. That one sounds fascinating. I feel like I have to do that one. I just need to know. Sorry, one more door. If you're not too important for other reasons I can't understand. What a bizarre progression system. I love it. It's absurd. Always keep one. I never want to spend my last point because I can spend it to unlock a white check in a kind of emergency situation. I like to have a buffer. It's just a good idea. Anything else here? The plain red tent stands dispassionately. It was pitched by practice hands. Yeah, we said this before. Okay. We found Ruby. And we've continued to find that Clashe has been lying to us, so that's not going to go well for her if I see her again, but I feel like she probably has run away because I, she knows that... Yeah, she probably knows that I'm onto her. Her lies can't stay hidden forever. 
Still, maybe a tomorrow problem? Almost certainly a tomorrow problem, it's midnight. Almost no characters are gonna be around that I can interact with. But tomorrow's gonna be fucking interesting, that's for sure. Oh god, it's 1am. Yep. Kim, we're gonna have a hell of a day six. It's a good thing we both got our guns. Cause Saturday night's alright for fighting. <laughs> Saturday night's alright, alright, alright. What? We can't rest right now? I'm afraid we don't have time for rest stops right now, officer. We should really get back to the whirling. Oh. Oh, something's gonna happen. Like, important mandatory plot's going to happen right now, even though it's 1 a.m. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna cut this off here, then. That's- that's gonna be an episode, I think. That's gonna be- That's not gonna be a little four-minute thing. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Get hyped, slash feel intense dread, whichever one you're more comfortable- which, whichever one you're less comfortable with, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.